We are told repeatedly that Allah is God. Is Allah God? This is another deliberate misrepresentation of both language and facts to confuse and deceive people who are ignorant of the language and history of the Arabs. In Arabic, Al-Ilah or Ilah means God. Allah, on the other hand, is just the name of a God. Just like Jupiter was the king among the gods of the Romans or Zeus among the Greek gods. Aphrodite, Venus, Hercules, Odin, etc., etc., are names of pagan deities. Similarly, the name of the supreme rock god of the Kaaba among the tribe of Muhammad the Quraysh in Mecca was called Allah. They are not at all God, but the names of pagan gods. Muhammad's father, for example, who was a pagan, that is before Islam, was called Abd Allah, meaning the slave of Allah. Hence, the name Allah was not Muhammad's invention or inspiration, because it was already in existence centuries before Muhammad and his Quran. To further prove my point, take the Shahada of the Muhammad al-Muslim, that is his declaration in his belief which says, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. In Arabic, it goes like this, La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulallah, which literally means that Allah is the name of God, ilah, and that Muhammad is the name of the messenger of Allah. If, on the one hand, Allah is God, then it should have said, there is no Allah but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Or, on the other hand, there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. But the Shahada does not say that, because in reality Allah is the name of a God. In his Quran, Muhammad actually metamorphosed the supreme rock God of Arabia, Allah, into the God of Israel and the God of Jesus. You keep mentioning the expression, the supreme rock God of the Kaaba. What do you mean by that? Well, when Muhammad finally subjugated the Quraysh tribe and ordered the destruction of about 360 gods and goddesses in the year 632 AD, he left only one stone unmolested in the Kaaba. Most Muhammadan Muslims have never been told or are ignorant of the following fact, as recorded in the tradition of the Arabs themselves, that the holiest rock of the Kaaba has always been and still is what they call the Black Stone, a meteorite that was venerated by the pagan Arabs centuries before Muhammad Islamized it by wrapping it up with a new and totally concocted historical and theological background that he plagiarized, plundered, pirated, and perverted from the Bible. It would have been inconceivable and utterly illogical for the pagan Arabs not to have a representation of the, their supreme rock god. It was because the black stone represented the spiritual home of the supreme rock god of the pagan Arabs that Muhammad, who according to the Ahadith actually venerated it, had no choice but to keep it, the black stone. Will you please tell me why you use the expressions Muhammad's Quran instead of just the Quran and Muhammadan Muslims? Because what has eluded the understanding of most of humanity is that there is not a single letter, let alone a word, a sentence, a paragraph, or a chapter, in the whole of the Qur'an that could have been revealed by any merciful and compassionate divinity. The Qur'an contains no mercy or compassion towards any human being, not even if they are followers of Muhammad. It is very important that the listeners should know that the greatest enemy, threat, and scourge of Muhammad and Islam is knowledge, and that the best friend, aid, supporter and saviour of Muhammadan Islam is ignorance. Hence, based entirely upon the Islamic sources themselves, in the Quran, in the Ahadith, and in the literature of the Muslim exegetes, I can assert that without a shadow of a doubt, and in reality, every letter, every word, every ayah, paragraph and surah in the Quran is actually the product of Muhammad's fervent imagination reflecting his personal thoughts, his fears, his hatreds, his lust, his anger, his jealousy, his needs, and his ideas. 
The Quran, in short, is Muhammad's own alter ego, projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme rock god of the Quraysh, embedded in the corner wall of the Kaaba, called the Black Stone. As far as I know, rocks, whether black, meteorites, or gems, do not and cannot inspire human beings with revelations. That is why I repeatedly mention Muhammad's Quran, since he was its author. And in fact, Muhammad, Gabriel, and Allah are one and the same, Muhammad, with Gabriel and Allah as red herrings to give his words divine sanction. I mention Muhammad and Muslims because they follow the cult of Muhammad. Muhammad and Islam is not a religion, but only a cult. In the Oxford Dictionary, religion is a belief in the divine. Cult is a belief and in emulation of a human being. Both the Quran and the Ahadith assert and instruct, especially the males of Muhammad and Islam, to slavishly emulate the deeds, thoughts, manners and ideas of Muhammad, since he represented the perfect male human being. This, by and of itself, represents cultism. Most important of all, there is not a single decent idea in the Quran that has not been plagiarized, pirated, plundered, and or perverted from the beliefs of others. The only new items in, in it are the enormous number of hate-mongering, war-mongering, torture, and hellish verses that permeate most of its pages.